Good morning and welcome to our Reflections from the Mads this last Sunday of April. I shared a whole lot last week of what's going on in church life, but just one addition to that this week in that we're going to be doing things differently today and potentially every Sunday from here on in. So alongside these reflections, there's also a chance to gather with others from the church family later today at 11.30. We'll be using Zoom, which you can access on your computer or your phone, even if it's just a dial-in. We'll be starting with a bit of time with the kids. Then we'll have some time for adults with a couple of interviews, a reading and a prayer. There are details about this on the church Facebook page and the website. So we hope to see you today at 11.30 if you're able to join us. I also hope that you're keeping well despite the restrictions that are on just now. I don't think I have ever lived during a time when things have been changing so quickly or when the change has been so profound. Jane and I were out for a walk the other evening and we noted just how quiet everything was. It'd been a nice day so maybe everyone else had been out already during the day for their daily exercise. Maybe we were the only folk that hadn't been out. But the silence was profound. Maybe a sign of our impotence in a sense in the midst of what we are facing. It's even more noticeable, I'm told, in the city. And my brother's a photographer and he's got permission to go out and to take photos around Edinburgh to record what it's like during the lockdown. It's quite dramatic. And here are some of the images that he's taken. Quite dramatic photographs, aren't they? They really catch how eerie it is in a sense. Empty streets and the message, stay home and save lives. And wherever you are, you'll have noticed differences too. Whether you're still at work and are having to face the different pressures that are there or whether you're stuck at home, things are different. And in our Sunday gathering, I said that we'll be interviewing a couple of folk about how they're coping with that. We'll be interviewing Eric Menteith, who's stuck at home and so bored that he's been cutting the council grass outside his door. And also Kirstine Rockcliffe, who's working on the front line at the Royal Infirmary in ICU, dealing with coronas, coronavirus patients. So we'll hear from them at 11.30. But at the start of our time just now, I want to share with you one of David's psalms. Psalm 62. I depend on God alone. I put my hope in him. He alone protects and saves me. He is my defender and I shall never be defeated. My salvation and honour depend on God he is my strong protector. He is my shelter. Trust in God at all times, my people. Tell him all your troubles, for he is our refuge. Don't put your trust in violence. Don't hope to gain anything by robbery. Even if your riches increase, don't depend on them. More than once, I have heard God say that power belongs to him and that his love is constant. Shall we pray? Lord, help us to hear David's words that come down to us through the centuries, reminding us to trust in you, that you are our strong protector 
our shelter from the storm. So draw us to that place just now where we rest in you, where in a sense all else is pushed to one side and we find ourselves in your presence, where our perspective on life is changed because we are with you, the one who is unchanging and true. More than once, I heard God say that power belongs to him and that his love is constant. Lord, may those words sink deep into our hearts. May they stir our faith and trust in you in new ways that no matter what we face, we may know you and honour you. Amen. God with us. And each time we've met together in this way over these last few weeks, that's been something I've wanted to affirm. And that's important for us at this time of uncertainty. But alongside coping with lockdown, one of the other things that we've heard this last week is that while things are improving, we won't be going back to the way things were anytime soon. And the talk in that has been about adjusting to a new normal. A new normal where hand washing is still in place, and I don't have any problems with that, I don't know about you. But also where social distancing is going to be key. And that one is really hard. At a funeral this last week, there were only a dozen or so folk there, and I couldn't shake hands with the family. Hopefully I did a good job and brought some comfort to them in that time. But it was just so hard. And the thought of these kinds of restrictions staying in place, I find difficult and I'm sure that you do too. And at times it appears that hopes are raised by news of a vaccine being tested only for someone in the next breath to say, but it will still be a long time before we can roll it out. Uncertainty. How do you cope in the midst of that? Our Bible passage today takes us into the heart of a time like that for the disciples. Not just a moment, but a time. A time of uncertainty. Living in a period between Jesus' resurrection and ascension, a period in which Jesus appears infrequently. A period of uncertainty that only really ends with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, which is the moment when a new normal for them becomes reality. And a new normal, interestingly, that they can cope with. That should give us hope for what lies ahead. And I hope that you hear that. A new normal they can cope with. But for now, we're going to look at the moment when the disciples are living with the uncertainty. They know Jesus is alive again. They've seen him. They've seen him twice. But it's not like before. He is not with them every day. And without his leading, they're really not sure what to do. Their raison d'etre, in a sense, has gone. They're lost. So a group of them, headed by Simon, James and John, who are fishermen, get a boat and go fishing. Here's what John tells us in John chapter 21. Simon Peter said to the others, I am going fishing. We will come with you, they told him. So they went out in a boat, but all that night they did not catch a thing. A night without a great outcome. But at least they've had something to do. And I think they were absolutely right to go fishing. They're not there because they want to escape from something. They're not dodging difficult things that they've been asked to do. They're simply finding things in many ways to fill their time. And doing that in a period of uncertainty when they don't quite know what to do. And there is something of that for us just now. Finding things to fill our time. Things that we can focus on and concentrate on. And those are different for all of us. Ella Gilbertson told me she was clearing out her kitchen cupboards. Anne Saunderson told me that she was crocheting. Not my thing, 
Instead, I've got a few hundred plants growing on in my greenhouse. Things we can focus on and concentrate on. And finding things to do will remain important. Perhaps it might feel like fishing and catching no fish. But these things are important for us in these times. And alongside that, so will be keeping contact with others. They didn't go fishing alone. Not all of the disciples went, but there are seven of them who are there in the boat and sharing together. And while we are not able to do very much together just now, that sense of keeping in touch, of speaking and sharing, has never been more important. That's the reason behind the starting of our Sunday gathering this week, so that we have a chance to do more than watch a video, doing that on our own or listening to this on a phone. So they go fishing. And in that moment, Jesus appears to them. Here's what John tells us. Today's reading is taken from John chapter 21, verses 4 to 7. Jesus appears to the seven disciples. As the sun was rising, Jesus stood at the water's edge, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then he asked them, Young men, haven't you caught anything? Not a thing, they answered. He said to them, Throw your net out on the right side of the boat and you will catch some. So they threw the net out and could not pull it back in because they had caught so many fish. The disciple, whom Jesus loved, said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken his clothes off, and jumped into the water. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. And so they all come ashore and they share breakfast together. And there is something of a reassurance in that time. Jesus' presence with them is important. And as Jesus does that for them, he does that for us in the midst of what we face. He draws alongside us, which is what we saw last week on the road to Emmaus. He's doing the very same thing here. He draws alongside us. But there's more than that in the passage. Because what follows after breakfast is a quiet conversation with Simon Peter who three times is asked to affirm his love for Jesus, three times told to feed his lambs, feed his sheep. Let's pick up the passage during that third question and affirmation. A third time Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter became sad because the Lord asked him the third time, do you love me? And so he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Take care of my sheep. I am telling you the truth. When you were young, you used to get ready and go anywhere you wanted to. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will tie you up and take you where you don't want to go. In saying this, Jesus was indicating the way in which Peter would die and bring glory to God. Then Jesus said to him, Follow me. Peter turned around and saw behind him that the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, the one who had leaned close to Jesus at the meal and had asked, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus answered him, If I want him to live until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. Follow me. I love those words. Twice he says it to Simon Peter in the passage that we have read. And in many ways what Jesus does as he utters those words and speaks them to Simon Peter is takes him back to the start and to another occasion by another lakeside when Jesus had called him for the first time. A time when Simon Peter had a big decision to make. And we're told that he left his nets and followed him. 
And for now, Jesus reminds him that his calling is the same one that he had then. He's calling him back to what he called him to before, three years before. The circumstances are different, but the calling is the same. And when Simon asks about John and what will happen with him, Jesus says the same thing. Follow me. Don't focus on him and what he will do. Focus on yourself and what you will do. Do what I would do. Live as I would live. Speak as I would speak, is what Jesus is saying. And that's important. Important words for Simon Peter, but important also for us. So in amongst all of this, in the period of uncertainty that we face as Simon Peter faced that, and even into the new normal that will emerge, Jesus continues to call us to follow him, to live for him, to serve for him, to speak for him. How we do that might look different to the way it did just a few weeks ago, but the calling is unchanged. And so stand with Peter this morning and let those words of Jesus roll over you and sink in. Come, follow me. Shall we pray? Lord, in the midst of everything, we thank you for those simple words of Jesus. Follow me. A reminder that your calling in our life remains the same as it has always been. That circumstances may change, yet the calling remains. So help us, we pray, to live for Jesus wherever we are. Stuck in our own homes or working under renewed pressure feeling helpless or finding purpose. Whatever we face, help us to live out our calling. Amen. So do join us at 11.30 if you can. But our closing praise today has a Scottish flavour written by John Bell, a member of the Eleanor community, and set to an old Scottish tune. Will you come and follow me? Will you come and follow me if I but call? Show.